welcome to my channel to those who have been here before welcome back so uh, right this video is not about afterburners but it is about afterburners as a friend of mine said some time ago about afterburners they're like the cherry on the cake the cherry on the icing it's the thing we get to do which is the real fun bit of building the engine now if you are looking forward to seeing the afterburner work the same as I am there's a picture here to give you a comparison of the size of the afterburner on the right which was the old engine to the afterburner on the left which will be the new engine so you can see we're gonna have some big big afterburner fun when things get done but we've got to build the engine first and things are happening kind of thanks to the kindness of people contributing people helping out I'm not going to give too many details yet when when I've got things I can tell tell you more uh, there's things happening with the cart chassis so we're getting there but it would be really nice if some more people would join up on the patreon um, every little bit helps three pound a month if, if you can't afford that just just watch and share and like my videos that's all I ask it all goes towards this fund. Um, I'm hoping, and really this is probably a bit premature of me, but I'm hoping that we can have the car and engine built and ready for its first run on track sometime around the end of September next year. So um, plenty to do still, plenty of work to get done, plenty of money to raise, um, always finding stuff that uh, I can convert back into money to put into the project but the main thing about this video is this it's the uh, the fuel manifold for the new engine um, I've done a whole video about how it's all put together um, what's unique is this this is a different way most engines that we build have um, evaporators a bit like the early uh, commercial engines did things like the Vipers and that had, had evaporators. Uh, this is a, a system that John Wallace kind of thought about. I tried it on the first engine that Scott's now got, and um, it, it seems to have worked okay. So I'm going to try and replicate it. So uh, here's some more detail about it's all done. How it, sorry about how it's all done. Uh, I hope you enjoy. Uh, it's a little long-winded but for those that are interested um, I'm sure they'll enjoy it and I'll uh, come back and have a chat after the video thank you I don't know how this is going to come over guys I want to try and share how I um, put the fuel system together um, using what we call or nicknamed the ratchet um, injectors uh, after John Wallace and his um, it was his idea basically um, the um, last engine that Scott's got um, had these injectors in. Um, John tried them, tried them in his latest engine, and they went back to evaporators. But um, I personally, I don't. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to run with them. They ran okay in the other engine. Um, what you basically do? Well, I've made a little tool. Um, the syringe goes in there. It's 0.8 millimeter. I think it's 18 gauge syringe and there's a hole got a, a 5 mil dowel with a chamfered edge it's difficult doing this one handed that gets pushed in the back there like that and sorry about this guys trying to do the best I can this I should let you know this is a, a syringe that was done and didn't pass muster the, the tip wasn't bent over properly um, just literally showing you this for demonstration purposes I don't know yet I'm going to show you drilling the um, the ring out and then silver soldering in all the syringes all right that's what you where are we gone somewhere here 
and it's going to focus on that well yeah i think you just about see come on focus nice i'll put it on there get a bit closer it's just bent the tip over at 90 degrees ideally it just wants to be just less than 90 degrees i don't know how well you can see that um i'll try and get some better pictures to illustrate it once i build the, the fuel ring with the 18 syringes in but that's how the whole process starts um next i'll be uh, trying to drill the 18 8 mil uh, 0.8 mil holes so guys we've uh, I've shown you bending the tips of the uh, 0.8mm syringes. I think they were, as I say, I think they're 18 gauge. Next thing you need to do is make this um, ring or fuel manifold or whatever you want to call it. I, I basically make these tools up, um, the pieces of laser cut 4mm mild steel, and I stack them on top of each other. I force the tube into the, the slot. And some bits missing you have to it's, it's bin day yeah, yeah. Um, top quality editing and sound quality don't you know yeah so that's then forced in there the red hose you can see is um, there for when I start drilling the um, the holes out um, try and keep any muck and dirt getting inside um, any of the swarf from drilling getting inside I try and put just a bit of air a few psi of air uh, so it obviously tends to blow stuff out it's positively pressured you could say so to put the little to, to mark out where the, the holes need to go I use a, a mask which goes over sits over there and then I've got here that's a um, a four mil punch which I've ground to a point and as you'll see there's all these holes I've got two of these that stack up on top of each other so you've got like a, a an 8 mil before hole as a guide and that goes in there give it a good whack and you end up with uh, these indentations I, I find them better for when we silver solder the um, the syringes in it's nice that you, you get like a little well where the silver solder sits in but we'll uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, I'm not going to show you drilling all 18 holes out. I mean, I know my videos tend to be a bit boring or a bit long-winded, but I'm sure you don't want to see that happening. So uh, I'll crack on, drill all these out, and then um, I'll come back to you and we'll I'll show you the part where we uh, set them up for for soldering. So there you go guys, um, all 18 injector syringes in the, the fuel manifold. Um, one thing I, I don't, can't remember if I mentioned but when you cut the syringes off, you cut them at an angle, you skive them so when they touch the bottom the fuel can get up through the bottom. I've got a piece of um, annealed stainless steel wire which I use just to check the, the bore of the needle and clean it all off so uh, I'm going to now put the uh, try and put the uh, flux around each needle try and keep it to the minimum um, so uh, again I'm not going to bore you with that I might do I showed you the drilling so but yeah um, you want to I, I personally try and keep the syringes as vertical as possible but yeah, put the flux on and uh, we'll take it from there. So let's see if I can't mess it all up now. Got all the syringes in vertical, uh, put the flux around each hole and some of the silver solder. What I'm trying to do now is just heat the whole thing as a unit and then I'll get the oxy propane torch on them 
Um, I'm just trying to do it as tidily and neatly as possible. I do find heating things, the whole volume just makes it easier because you don't have to put so much direct heat on at one go. Right, well it's been cooking for a while now. Let's see if I can't mess a few up. So I think I've only got two that have uh, not gone to plan, so I'm just going to That one's definitely not gone to plan So that's um, pretty much it for all the way in Some of them are harder than others, uh, normally I'd pass some gas through them and light them to see what they're flowing like but unfortunately I can't find me my gas valve so I've just put some compressed air through put a flame through them and it, it it gets affected pretty much by all of them I've had to tweak one or two but they're not going to be all identical we ain't got the equipment to make them all identical apart from that one that didn't want to play and melted the, the syringe the rest of them I'm, I'm pretty happy with They've all gone in nice, looks tidy, but that one that I had to replace and the um, flux doesn't seem to want to clear up, but it, it's in, it's held in there. I've had, I think I had 60 psi plus, probably more actually, more like, um, yeah, probably 80 or 90 psi of air pressure going through them. So they're not going to shift, they're all, all pretty similar. They all get a slight tweak when they go in to the flame tube just put a, a forward slant on them but yeah um, hopefully they're gonna be good so I hope I explained it the best I could um, anything you need to know as usual contact me comment uh, join the Jetson turbine owners forum uh, we're all there to help you build your own engines uh, and as again, as I say, if, if you do feel like you want to contribute towards the, the project, um, have a look at the Patreon site, 
Um, your name will get on the go-kart chassis when it does its 175 mile an hour or whatever it does. Um, there's some debate yet still about how fast it may even be faster. A lot depends on how, how aerodynamic it can make the, the cart and the chassis. I'm hoping to have some more information about that for you soon. Um, but until then, as usual, everyone, thanks for taking the time to watch my interesting, boring videos or whatever. Uh, like, share and comment, I think a lot of the YouTubers say. Uh, I, I ain't a YouTuber. But uh, thanks anyway, guys. Until next time, take care.